morning everybody. I feel like I haven't done this for a very long time. I miss you all so much. Um, it's great to be back and I'll be sharing a poem with you in a moment but just to say a huge welcome to school this week to the children in our early years so our reception children and nursery children are back into school this week and well done to all of those children that have been with us recently so year one are here year six are here and now the early years and obviously those amazing children that have been coming in all day every day since we went into lockdown what i should say though is well done to you guys too thank you for tuning into the assembly every week thank you for getting onto your google meets your google classrooms and just generally doing what you need to be doing thank you so much okay that's enough for my hellos and thank yous i'll see you again in a moment i'm handing over to miss cook for our discussion today, we're going to be talking about what the new normal is, back to normal. And we're going to start off, because we all know how much I love animals, we're going to start off by talking about zoos. During the lockdown, zoos have closed to the public. The animals are still there and have been looked after, but they have struggled. Chester Zoo has nearly 35,000 animals and it costs nearly £1.6 million a month to look after them. Is there a tiger behind me? Just like schools, shops, hairdressers, they've all had to close to help keep people safe. Some zoo people wanted to open earlier. It's a tricky decision. Whilst we all still need to follow the rules, it is starting to feel a bit more like normal. But is that possible? Will it be the same as before or different? I don't think things are gonna go back completely normal because this is like a pandemic and everyone's freaking out about it. But as long as we keep staying inside, um, stuff will get better. I say yes because um, the, like, Boris Johnson might say we can go one metres apart and we can get more pe kids coming to our school so then we can have space. Um, I think things will go back to normal eventually, but it might take a little while just because People think that the coronavirus outbreak will have another um, peak. It will go um, back to normal, but it will take a few years and a lot of time um, to for this lockdown to be finished. Um, I don't think uh, things will come back to normal because we can't risk the same thing happening again. We um, There will be stricter rules around. Maybe there will be limited shops again, but more people allowed. I'm on both sides sides because um, some people are saying yes, some people are saying no, but there might be a second lockdown, so maybe no, maybe yes, so it depends on what the government chooses. Maybe the best thing to do is to follow the safety rules. Maybe this could be the new normal. Thank you, Miss Cook. And before we go back to Mrs. Stefali, I just want to share a little opportunity with you of a new project which has been funded by Newham Council. So it's called the Newham Unlocked Community Broadcasts. It's all about local people all across Newham making little films showing what creativity means to them through the lockdown period. So I'm gonna play a little video for you. It's not something that we are directly involved with as a school, but it's something that we like the values of. So if you'd like to take part, watch this and join in. Hello everyone, my name is Mayer and I am a filmmaker from Niwa. I will be here to edit and combine all the great videos you guys are going to be sending. Let us showcase how creative our community is. I'm going to give you a few tips on how to record and send your video for the new Ham Unlocked Community Broadcast. We want to ensure that we clearly see what you've been creating. This tutorial will help you to film your creative input and hopefully improve your acting and filming skill. Let us start with the setup of your camera. You want to get the maximum of details possible. If you are using your phone, we need landscape footage and not portraits, so make sure that your phone is on its side. You can change the definition of your film, plus set it up to FHD, full high definition. If you are using your camera, go on your settings and set up your camera to 1080p. Done! With these settings, we will be able to see all the details of your work. You want to make sure that you record steady footage. 
Obviously, if you have a tripod, it would greatly help to get stable shots. However, we can be resourceful and craft tools with material found around your home. You also want to be in control of the effect you want to give to your submission view. A close-up shot can maybe focus on your work and unravel all the details of your creation. When a medium shot might both showcase your work and the artist presenting it. Finally, a wide shot can present your work, the artist and the tools you used. That is said, be aware of your environment and try to avoid backlights or other present shadows which could have a strong impact on the quality of your video. If you want to record your voice, you will have to do it in a soundproof environment, avoiding echo and background noises. By experience, the best place to do it is your bedroom. The more furniture, the better for the acoustic. Close the windows and the door, speak slowly and clearly, and most importantly, be yourself. All right, that's it for now. Get involved. Submit your video to the new Arm Unlocked community broadcast and inspire others to do the same. I'm really keen to see your creative output. You will be able to submit your videos from the 18th of June at newarmunlockedbroadcast.org. Hi, me again. Right, I was having a little think about how I could link up zoos and back to normality and it reminded me of a poem that I read when I was younger and I really enjoyed reading it and I thought I know what I'm going to do I'm going to share it with you guys today now I'm sorry because I'm going to have to read it off of this screen next to me because the printer's not working at the moment and we'll have a little discussion about it afterwards this poem is called The Lion and Albert and it's written by Marriott Edgar and it was written in Victorian times, so early in the early 1900s, I reckon. There's a famous seaside place called Blackpool that's noted for fresh air and fun. And Mr and Mrs Ramsbottom went there with young Albert, their son. A grand little lad was there, Albert, all dressed in his best, quite a swell, with a stick and an horse's head handle the finest that Woolworths could sell. They didn't think much to the ocean, the waves they was fiddling and small. There was no wrecks and nobody drowned. in fact nothing to laugh at at all. So seeking for further amusement they paid and went into the zoo where they'd lions and tigers and camels and old ale and sandwiches too. There was one great big lion called Wallace. His nose was all covered with scars. He lay in a somnolent posture with the side of his face on the bars. Now Albert had heard about lions, how they was ferocious and wild. To see Wallace lying so peaceful, well, it didn't seem right to the child. So straightway the brave little fella not showing a morsel of fear, took his stick with the horse's head handle and shoved it in Wallace's ear. You could see that the lion didn't like it, for giving a kind of a roll, he pulled Albert inside the cage with him and swallowed the little lad whole. Then Pa, who had seen the occurrence, and didn't know what to do next, said, Mother, yon Albert set, yon lion set Albert. And Mother said, Ee, I am vexed. The Mr and Mrs Ramsbottom, quite rightly, when all said and done, complained to the animal keeper that the lion had eaten their son. The keeper was quite nice about it. He said, What a nasty mishap. Are you sure it's your boy that he's eaten? Pa said, I am sure. There's his cap. So the manager had to be sent for. He came and he said, What's to do? Pa said, Yon lion's at Albert. And him in his Sunday clothes too. Then mother said, Right's right, young fella. I think it's a shame and a sin for a lion to go and eat Albert and after we've paid to come in. 
The manager wanted no trouble. He took out his purse right away, saying, How much to settle the matter? Pa said, What do you usually pay? But Mother had turned a bit awkward when she thought where her Albert had gone. She said, No, someone's got to be summonsed. So that was decided upon. Then off they went to the police station in front of a magistrate chap. They told him what happened to Albert and proved it by showing his cap. The magistrate gave his opinion that no one was really to blame. He said that he hoped the Ramsbottoms would have further sons to their name. At that, Mother got proper blazing. And, thank you, sir, kindly, said she. What, waste all our lives raising children? To feed the lions? Not me. So, that's a poem that I liked. Now, I wonder if you can think about why I might have liked that. When I was younger, I really enjoyed reading it and I remember one of my favourite teachers reading it to me and I remember thinking how ridiculous it was and actually how funny that, that really the biggest issue for them, as if this was going to be the issue, the biggest issue was about them getting a refund for their trip to the zoo when actually they'd lost their son. Their son had been eaten by a lion and they were worried about the refund and then at the end she was... That they were even saying, the magistrate, what did the magistrate said? He said something like, well, I hope you have another son to replace him. And I remember thinking, that is just so ridiculous. And it seemed so ridiculous that it made me laugh. I know, I've said it to you before. I've got a bit of a strange sense of humour. Anyway, if you listen to that again, when you get a chance, maybe you can have a little discussion with your parents about some of the language in that. Because it's quite, it's quite um, old fashioned. And maybe have a think about which of those words you don't actually know. For example, I remember the word vexed. And I remember learning that word vexed when I um, first heard this poem because I didn't know what it meant. And I found out what it meant in the dictionary. And then I used it ever since from, from that time on. It's not really a word that you'll hear much, uh, much now. And actually, it was meant to be read in um i'd say a, a, a northern accent and my accents aren't great but i tried anyway so that was my little link up to the zoo theme and yeah pro probably not very many links to normality there because it didn't seem like the most normal poem did it now this week we are not sharing any home learning with you but please do yeah. keep it coming in oh because if you share it with us we can share it back with you. So now all I'm going to do, Philos, is hand over to Itsy Pecknold. Sometimes eight is 56, sometimes nine is. Oh, hey, rock stars and numbers fans. Mitzi's here for this week's TT Rockstar number update. I hope you've been having a rocking week. This week we're going to start with our number players in key stage one. I hope you're ready, numbers. Well, let's see who was in our top five this week. Joseph in Einstein, well done. You're in the top five again, Joseph. You've been amazing. You were number five this week, Joseph. Number four this week was Mariam and Marco Polo, rocking it for the year ones. Also in year one, but this time from Aldrin, Uzair, you're in third position this week. Fantastic, Uzair. Da Vinci, Umar, well done. You are in second position this week in our numbers top five and Big shout out to our number one player in Key Stage 1, and that's you, Shrinav, in Pastor class. And I'm going to give you an extra big shout out because you've also been rocking hard on TT Rockstars, and you've done really well on both games over the last week. So, well done everybody, keep on playing. Now, over to our Key Stage 2, Rockstars. Let's see, it's been quite an unusual week this week because one class are in the top four. One class of the four top players. But first, let's start in fifth position. It's Declan in Galileo. Well done, Declan. You're in the top five again. Now, I don't know what's been happening in Fairness League class, what Mr. Fisher has said to you, or even if Mr. Fisher is a real rock star. But the next four players all come from Fairness League. Moaz, 
you're in fourth place. Tiana, you're in third place this week. Maisie, in our top five again. Well done, Maisie, you're in second place. And our number one TT Rockstars player this week is Rasik. Rock on, Berners Lee. I don't know if Mr. Fish is a better rock star than me, but if I ever see him around here, I'll be sure to ask, ask him. Everyone, keep on playing your numbers and TT rock stars. Rock on, peace out. Hi everyone, so it's Stars of the Week now. Uh, apologies for the fact that I'm in my gym gear. I've just come back from a run and yet yeah, sweaty and it's a very hot Friday, isn't it? Well, actually, it's a very hot Thursday because I'm recording this on Thursday. So, Miss Rios says, could there be a general shout out to those children who have had their siblings back in school? And I absolutely agree with that. All of those of you whose, whose siblings, brothers and sisters, have come into school and you are still at home and you think, why are they in school and I am not in school? I totally get that. So we are shouting out to those of you that are still at home and their brothers and sisters maybe are back at school and you are still going onto your Google Meets and your Google Classrooms and you are doing what you should be doing but you are not yet back in school. Thank you and well done to all of you. And that's a special thank you from Miss Rios. Okay, Ramesa in Brunel. Four, her explanations in the online maths lesson. Your teacher says you were able to articulate your understanding perfectly, which helped everybody to understand the concept more clearly. Well done you, Ramesa. For Sonny in Da Vinci, for joining in the class Google Meets with enthusiasm and a shining smile. It's been a pleasure to hear about your home learning and you were a star at our brain teaser puzzles this week. Well done you, Sonny. Can't wait to see you. For Hassan Mahmood in Hawking class, for always being so positive and uplifting during your weekly phone calls. Your teacher says that they always end the chat with a big smile on their face. Thank you, Hassan. For Emily in Pasteur class, displaying an enthusiastic attitude and mindset from the very start of lockdown. You've made sure that you've a daily routine which includes exercise. Emily has kept her spirits high. This has had a positive impact on her home learning and she, her, and she always puts her teachers in a good mood when they speak to her. Thank you, Emily. And Emily, I can also say thank you because I saw you in the park the other day and that lifted my spirits too. Thank you. To Nicole in Gandhi class for your excellent engagement in your online learning. Keep up the fantastic effort and well done you, Nicole. We miss you. For Halima in Marco Polo, a fantastic return to school. You're trying so hard and starting to use your big voice too. Big voice? Keep it up. Me and Miss Lane. I am thinking that that must be Miss Lennon and Miss Lane are very, very proud of you, Halima. Well done. For Ronnie in Galileo class being fantastic and enthusiastic about all the different things that you are learning at home and for your eagerness to discuss the books that you're reading and why you are enjoying them so much. Ronnie, I can't wait to see you so we can have a reading conversation. Well done. For Luca in Edison, for joining Park Primary so well this week. This week? you've joined us for starting a new school is difficult at any time but this is even more challenging now you've taken things in your stride and you've been a joy to talk to on the phone welcome to park luca for levi in attenborough class you apparently have been amazing you've made up new raps every day and you perform them to your bubble. 
You've been so enthusiastic and you have kept everyone's spirits high. Well done you, Levi. I would love to listen to your raps. For Arun, in pod two, bubble three, you've demonstrated a really mature and reflective attitude since your return. You've made some really sensitive comments and, and in your thinking about transition to year seven. Well done you. And you've appreciated the, vi the views of your peers. Arun, I won't tell anyone about your hairdo when you turned up the other morning and I asked you if you'd just got out of bed. Whoops, did I just tell everyone about that? Franco in Attenborough, you've worked really hard, especially in your maths, and you've also been teaching the other ch children gymnastics in the playground. Franco, can you teach me, please? For Valentin in pod two, bubble one, you're growing so much in confidence. It's wonderful to see you sharing more in your class, dis in your class discussions. Well done you, Valentin. Salda, pod two, bubble two, You've worked exceptionally hard since coming back, sharing ideas and knowledge, as well as your brilliant sense of humour. Well done, Sauda. It's so lovely to see you coming in in the mornings. Well done. Mohammed Dean in Berners Lee, for being a creative learner and sharing your wonderful ideas with others in the class. Mohammed Dean, you've been in bubble one throughout all of this and you have been exceptional. Thank you. For Alice in Marie Curie class, for Alice M in Marie Curie class, for engaging well with the creative tasks that have been set. You've made a fantastic piece of artwork, experimenting with different materials and mark making. Your flower, apparently, I'm yet to see it, looks fantastic. There's a big shout out for all of the children in pod four, pod four, who have returned with confidence, enthusiasm, and great big smiles this week. Thank you. Well done, Dylan, for coming back to school full of enthusiasm and excitement. You also helped your friends by explaining how to wash their hands safely. Well done you, it's great to have you back. And finally, for Habiba in Malala, for contributing brilliantly to our year six Google Meet about Kinsuki's kingdom. Well done, all of you. I am genuinely so proud of every single one of you. Thank you.